Log on, tune in, find out. Cambridge Ideas, transforming tomorrow. Humans view plants as vulnerable, defenceless, fragile things. But if we look around the world, what we see is that 99% of living organisms are plants. So plants can't be defenceless because they're always being attacked by animals. The first line of defense for a plant is a remarkably simple one. Plants cover themselves with hairs. If you want a really unpleasant experience, Put a kiwi fruit into your mouth without peeling it, revolting. The skin is covered in fine hairs, and those hairs are very unpleasant when they get into your mouth. Well, I'm John Parker, and I'm director of the Botanic Garden here in Cambridge. My role really is to try and get you to see the world the way the plant does. <laughs> Hairs are the primary means of defence, but sometimes that defence needs to be greater. This plant has ferocious, ferocious spines to keep grazing animals far away. There are, below that, little white patches. These have little spines themselves. If a grazing animal gets these tiny spines stuck in its sensitive parts, they irritate. And if they irritate, they carry on for a long time. It's a long-term deterrent to prevent that animal by attacking the plant for a second time. Amazing. Let's say an animal gets to the leaf surface. The plants have another surprise in store. If an animal attacks this plant, then as soon as it bites into the leaf, it will get an injection of this white substance. This is latex. It gums up the mouth parts. That's a really unpleasant thing to do. My fingers are already getting sticky and I've only just touched it. The animal then not only can't eat, but almost certainly will die. It's a very, very effective way of preventing attack. Well, let's take you to one of these plants, which is quite often grown in gardens as a beautiful and defenseless plant. Far from it. Let's look at these fruits of ricinus, the castor oil plant. Now inside these fruits there are seeds. If you press them an oil comes out and that's the oil that we use in order to relieve our constipation. But what's left behind? In the seed is left a protein and it's just as well. The protein is called ricin and it is the most poisonous thing that we know. As little as one microgram per kilogram of body weight is enough to kill you or any other animal that wants to eat it. And it's the plants that are the great chemists of this world. They produce probably about a million different chemicals and almost all of those chemicals are to prevent animals eating them. This is a yew tree. All parts of you are deadly poisonous. But remarkably, the seeds are coated with this soft, sticky, red material, which is sweet. This material has none of the poisonous chemicals of the yew within it. And in fact, we could eat it. This fruit, though, is an offering of the plant, and it's being offered to birds. And these birds eat the berries and the seeds go straight through without them being crushed. So the plant is providing nutrients for birds. 
in exchange for the bird transporting the seeds so that it can then grow somewhere else, not under the parent tree itself. So, look at these kiwi fruit. What you must only eat is what the plant wants you to eat. They offer parts of their own body for consumption. That's the trick that plants use in order to deceive animals. Plants are not the defenseless objects you might have thought. That makes them the dominant organisms. So, what are we going to eat as humans? Well, we can eat fruit. Be a fruitarian. But if you want real fruit that's not defended by hairs, by spines, by revolting chemicals, become a carnivore.